As pro-lifers celebrate Roe v. Wade being overturned, pro-abortion supporters are frustrated by the Supreme Court's decision. Conversations surrounding abortions, contraception, and issues of life are often emotionally charged, and disagreements over these topics can lead to arguments and even fallouts between close friends and family. And joining us now to discuss is Allison Ricciardi, founder of CatholicTherapist.com and CatholicLifeCoaches.com. Allison, welcome back. Always so good to have you on. Um, I know you recently wrote a blog post about your reaction to the news of Roe being overturned. Tell us more about that. And I understand even you were a little shocked by your initial emotions. Uh, yeah, I was. I thought I would be thrilled out of my mind. And it, the pain of 50 years of destruction, not only seeing it in the schools when I was going there, but in therapy over the years, the brokenness that this has caused our society. And how many people really don't understand the issue that's so emotionally charged and it's so, um, we don't get the truth from the media. And most people today don't even realize what Roe v. Wade actually says or, or did to our society. You know, we're really dealing with a lot of very, very wounded people. And I'll tell you, the grief of that really hit me. And then, of course, I was very happy. Yeah, it really is, um, as we said, emotionally charged. And we know, as I mentioned, too, not everybody is celebrating the outcome um, of the decision over jobs. How, how can the faithful start conversations with those who may have vastly different viewpoints on abortion? Well, I think the first thing is we always need to always start by listening. You know, anybody under 50 grew up in a world where abortion was always legal. So to them, and especially with all the media hype, they feel like something fundamental has been taken away from them. But I think even more importantly, so many people have been wounded by abortion, whether directly or indirectly. We've all been affected by this, whether it's somebody who had a past abortion, maybe a sibling was aborted, maybe a friend, maybe they helped a friend. So there's a lot of woundedness around this topic. And it's almost like because they made that choice, they're afraid to ever say that it was wrong, even though in their heart they know they're suffering. So I think to maybe ask people questions. First of all, help, help me to understand how you feel. You know, why do you feel this way about Roe v. Wade? What is your understanding of what Roe v. Wade really was about? And then start to educate them. And of course, it starts by educating ourselves. Most people are unaware that Roe v. Wade legalized abortion through nine months of pregnancy. Even though they broke it into trimesters, that was very arbitrary. It had nothing to do with viability or anything like that. And viability really only measures our technology. It doesn't measure anything about the child in question, right? Because our, our technology has improved to a point where we can save babies earlier and earlier. So start the conversation by asking them, help me to understand why you feel that way. You know, because there might be pain that you can actually minister to them. And also letting them know that, you know, a lot of people have been hurt by this and that there's help available because a lot of people don't realize that. They feel like they have to continue to defend their position. So open up that door to healing with people and try to listen. It always starts with listening. That's always your best bet. Yeah, that's such a great point. And, you know, not even just having a conversation with somebody uh, over abortion, but even just watching or reading the news of how things are playing out with some pro-abortion supporters, you know, them acting out and lashing out, sometimes even violently. I mean, that can have an impact on our emotional state as well. Um, quickly, any tips to help us bring peace to ourselves during these times? Well, I think the fact that this was settled on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is an enormous sign to us that this stronghold is being broken. So, you know, the devil is always going to make a lot of noise on his way out. So I think that we have to realize that God is in control. We've prayed for 50 years, most of us, for every day, every rosary, for an end to this carnage of abortion. They're going to react. But, you know, even if you look at the statistics, more people are pro-life than people realize. There are many people who think it should be legal in the very early part of pregnancy, but very little support for what Roe v. Wade actually did with second and third trimester abortions. So I think to ignore the noise, keep your eyes focused on Jesus, continue to pray because God is in control. We are winning. 
this stronghold is breaking and it's going to crumble. And I feel very confident about that. This has been a long-term prayer, at least for me and for so many people I know. So ignore the noise, try to have compassion because sometimes the people who are screaming the loudest are the people who are hurting the most. So we need to, we need to pray for them. We need to minister to them and we need to not let them rattle us. God is in control. And that was a huge sign on that amazing feast day. Also feast of St. John the Baptist who leapt in the womb when he encountered Jesus. So huge sign to us. And I think we should all be celebrating it. The work isn't done. We need to provide alternatives. We need to really step up our efforts, but we need to really be compassionate toward those who are hurting, those who might have a different opinion, because we want to win them over to, to, you know, to let them know God loves them and God has mercy all the time. Oh, well said and great advice as always, Allison. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you too.